Hi everyone. This is Madhu. And it is my first post in Happy Demic. And uh, this is the first time I am shooting myself without my trademark red lipstick, without covering my under eyes. I'm sweaty, I'm not clean, my hair is not neat. Because Happy Demic does not mean blemishless skin and spotless photograph. It means a spotless soul. That's what we need in our world, in my happy demic. Happy demic is a word that I came during pandemic because this pandemic that we are finding ourselves in, it's spreading so easily and so fast. And it's brought in its wake all kinds of pain. And I want to create a happy demic, a world where our smile, our love is contagious. That is the meaning of happy demic. And I start happy demic in my purest, cleanest, with no filter and no cover ups, no pretense, no lies. Even with this coronavirus, our, our human beings have optimism bias. We find our way to believe the best is yet to come. We know how to look for the best even during these really troubled times. We know how to look for positives while we are going through the most negative phase of our life. So even in coronavirus, we've begun, even though it's got so much grief, so much loss, loss of lives, loss of money, loss of finances, loss of... There's so much that we have lost as human beings. But yet, somehow, we found that what is the positive that we are getting during this uh, coronavirus and pandemic and lockdown quarantine time. We are looking at the clear skies with no pollution. We are looking at the water seas, the migratory birds. We are looking at the bonding that the family is feeling. We are looking at how much happiness we can find in having less and the futility of running behind excess and so on and so forth. We've learned new ways of being and we found our new happiness. We found the magic of social media, which can actually be a boon. It can show us connectivity. We found so much joy even during these times. We found ways of looking at it as a positive. We are saying that the earth is uh, transcending to a new energy which is, it's a shift of energy and we are hoping that better things are coming. So even while we are going through this most difficult times in our lives, we still know how to look for the positives and we are able to look for it, hold on to it, and we know how to, uh, we are resistant, we are adaptable. We human beings are the strongest species on the planet. But can we say the same about a rape? Can we justify a rape? Can we say this rape happens or something good or something better is coming or something better is going to happen? The Nirbhaya case that happened in 2016, did rape stop after that? How, how does this go on? And to believe that it is human beings doing to human beings. It's a man doing to a woman. We are the same species. Can we say that there is something good going to come out of it, even though today it is so horrendous, it is so heinous, but tomorrow it's going to be better? Can we justify that? Can we say that? Can we sympathize? Can we empathize? If, yeah, we say that it is a problem in the mind. But does that allow you to go on and do this in society, in, in our planet? Can, are you allowed to do that by saying, I'm a sick mind? Even an alcoholic, when he says, I am an alcoholic, he goes to a rehab center, Alcoholic Anonymous, and first thing he says is, I am an alcoholic, and then the treatment begins. If a rapist mind is a sick mind, then the first thing he must be, he should do is to say, I am a rapist before he rapes. And then goes to the law and say, I am getting these urges, I am going to rape, so please put me in, lock me in. Can he not do that? I urge the lawmakers, I urge the government to sidestep 
the whole court procedure. When you catch hold of a rapist, hang him in the middle of the road, mutilate him and show it on all the TV channels. So people watch it and shudder at the punishment given to them. So every time a mind thinks that it wants to do this or it can do this, that images should re reverberate in his system and prevent him from doing this. Ask any girl of any age, any woman, even if there is a, a lewd glance that she has sensed what it makes you feel, what your soul feels, even if it's an unwanted brush of an elbow in a crowded place or in a, a, a public transport, what does it make you feel? Your spine shudders, the soul shudders, even with a touch. So what must that soul feel when she's raped and mutilated and killed? And to believe and to know that another human being is doing this. We need not empower girls. We need not do girls empowerment, women's empowerment, so that we can stand and fight against men in society. Don't separate men and women, boys and girls. We are human beings first before we are boys and girls. Empower men, empower women, empower mankind, empower humanity, empower human beings. Teach us, teach them how to live together. Dear men, dear boys, dear brothers, fathers, husbands, lovers, how can you live without women? Can your right hand cut your left hand and be happy? You are incomplete without us, just as we are incomplete without you. We cannot go on without each other. So please, Stop it in whichever way, whatever helps. Government, lawmakers, mothers, who, whoever needs to step in here and make the change. Protect our girls, protect us women. We are endangered species, just like the tigers and the crocodiles or the pandas. Protect girls, protect women. But boys, men, you are just a part of us. So protect your own other side of your life, other, other half of your life. Protect yourself, protect us. This is my smile. <laughs>